Hello and welcome to MZ Webinars. Thank you for joining us today. We're really excited to be joined by MZ's Executive VP of Global Operations, Andy Derman, and VP of European Sales, Marco Tucci. Uh, we also have a special guest today who Andy will introduce in a moment. If you have any questions during the course of this webinar, please put them in the question box on the control panel and we will endeavor to get back to those at the end of the presentation. We are going to share with you the recording and slides from today's uh, presentation in a follow-up email. So please keep your eyes open for that. So without any further ado, I'll hand over to Andy. Hi, Andy. Hi, Debbie. Thank you very much. And hello, everyone. Salut, ça va? Uh, hola and uh, ciao and all the other things. So uh, well, welcome to today's session. I'm very excited to have my trusted co-pilot, Marco Tucci, joining us today. Hello, Marco. Hello, Andy. Hello, Hall. Good stuff. And uh, as Debbie mentioned, we're very delighted to have a special guest joining us a little later on in the session. Uh, so uh, just moving through, just wanted to uh, reintroduce to you for anyone that's new to, to this uh, webinar series, the um, MZ Burning Glass work and our mission and, and, and what we're pushing on. You know, our, in summary, our primary goal is to help uh, organizations such as yours and the communities that you serve make better decisions about the labor market through having good insight, data and evidence upon which to base decisions about careers, work, education, skills development and making key economic investments as well. And so we're really here to guide you in your really important work at times of great challenge and change in the labor market um, that, that we're facing now post pandemic uh, and as the world gets ever crazier in terms of its uh, interconnected economy. We want to bring some uh, light into that and understand what is going on in your area, in your communities and the, and the wider world. And so that's, uh, that's why we do what we do. And today's webinar is all about continuing that theme of understanding how information and data about the labor market can be utilized uh, to, to make those key decisions and help you be ever more impactful for the communities that you serve. I mentioned about the data and information. We pull together insights about the labor market from a whole range of uh, areas and, and uh, data sets ranging from official government statistics that really help us understand the structural building blocks to different uh, economies and what makes up uh, key economies and how those have been changing over time through to big data uh, derived from sources like online job posting activity to really illuminate what the uh, uh, the sharp focus of demand is uh, on a on a more current basis, um, and and pull lots of this information together through building structure and science to that data that turns a lot of big noisy information into more um, easily consumable insights through building libraries and taxonomies around uh, that describe aspects of the labour market from different job roles and building categories there through to um, illuminating the skills that are really driving the labor market uh, as we go. So that's who we are and what we do. And in today's session, we're gonna cover two key, key components. First of all, um, you may have already visited our previous webinars, but we wanted to take an opportunity to recap the last couple of webinars that we've done and particularly recapping the, the role that labor market inf information and intelligence is playing for economic planning and, and in the sphere of education. So we wanted to recap and bring that together. And then uh, on the foundation of that, this is where we bring our experts in today and we'll have a conversation about some real world applications um, of labor market information and, and the impact that that's having on, on communities across Europe. So very excited to have that conversation shortly but before we get to to that part um with our friend in ego um i'd like to bring back my co-pilot uh and in in this uh marco and um ask marco to kind of remind us of what we've covered thus far on our journey together in these webinars so marco um why don't you take it away okay thank you thank you handy just uh, as you said just a brief recap on lmi what is and why is it so important for uh, economic and uh, education planning? 
we are living in a world of big changes and challenges. So the impact of these changes and the challenges that I have indicated, you can, you can see in, in, in the left side of the slides, are very significant for the labor market. For example, the merging of digital and soft skills, the merging of new occupations, the new way of working, for instance, smart and remote working, etc. So those facts are reflected in increased specific skills requirements that are that we can find in job postings that are posted daily by by employers, by companies. And we can also uh, observe an increased skill description level in job seekers profile. So this is, uh, um, uh, we can say, as uh, we can see here, that we are really, we are in a skill-based economy nowadays. So, um, <laughs> understanding all, all the changes uh, is uh, crucial, is uh, essential. So uh, for university and training agencies, uh, they, uh, they must adapt their educational offer in order to reflect the market needs. So this is uh, very important. And also for policymakers, they must reshape their local uh, economies by planning the, the future investments. And uh, this is, uh, these are the reasons for which uh, LMI is so important and can help us to achieve this, uh, this, important, uh, this important thing. So, but what, what is LMI? LMI is uh, simple, it's uh, information and insight on the labor market. It gives us information on occupation, most sought by employees, the skills that employers are seeking, the industries, so which industries, which companies are more hiring, which occupation and skills are they looking for. For instance, the education level required for assessing those occupations. So, to recap, LMI enable us to have a view of the labor market based on solid evidence of the data. So, uh, the, the um, view of the labor market is not based on our assumption or guesswork, are based on solid evidence, data, data, data. Okay. So, uh, LMI uh, is an um, important, uh, important uh, view of observation of the, the, the labor market and is composed and we use by uh, two important, uh, let me say, sources. So the official statistics and big data. Um, they are, in some sense, uh, they are complementary. Why? Because Official statistics are representative, are very robust, but they are lacking of details and time lines. On the opposite, this is the reason for which we are used to use the, um, the online job vacancies, because they are fresh. So we, are, we do daily collection of uh, online job vacancies, they are very granular. They use the company's languages. They use market terms. So this is very important for analyzing, having a deeper understanding on the labor market. So this is a quick recap, and I leave you the stage handy. Thank you very much, Marco. Good, good, good recap, and if people want to dive into more of the background behind some of this and what we've described before, um, then the previous recordings of the webinars are available and I'm sure will circulate in follow-up to this, this session. So thank you, Marco, for, for that. And that really sets a, a nice foundation for um, our guest uh, 
uh, who's joining us today. So I'm delighted to invite uh, Inigo Agalusta, um, founder and CEO of Add It Out. Um, they're good friends of ours. We've been working for a number of years together. And so um, we're going to dive into a conversation uh, really that thinks about that foundation that Marco mentioned and that, um, real life examples of work that his organization is doing on the ground in, in, in different communities. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now so we can get the faces involved. There we go. So in you go. Uh, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Thank you so very what, much. A pleasure having you. Why don't we kick off? Um, tell us a little bit about yourself personally and, and then um, add it out, your, your, your business and, and kind of what your what you're doing there and then we can we can start to dive into the conversation okay thanks a lot andy so uh, yes uh, uh, i'm in your galusa the founder and ceo of uh, added out uh, added out is a company founded in it's uh, nine uh, years ago uh, with the aim of uh, it's based here in the in biscaya in the basque country and giving uh, and offering our services to industries uh, and institutions uh, around different countries uh, over Europe and uh, America. In this case, we have during these nine years, we have had the chance of uh, working for institutions and organizations in uh, Ireland, in Portugal, in the USA, apart from obviously here in the Basque Country. So uh, what we can say uh, when talking about Add It Out is that uh, we are experts on two things mainly. One of them is uh, integration. Is, uh, I mean, uh, everything we do is integrated with what is already existing. And at the same time, is very user friendly. Which is a key point as well, okay? Because uh, if you go to to a specific experiences, you will see that okay, now we are talking about this sector that has nothing to do with, with this other one. But in the end, what we are doing all the time is facilitating, make it re making it really easy for users to get the information they want, okay? Because in the end, we users and uh, we uh, now we can go to 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 the point where you you uh, want okay but uh, in the end what uh, users want when we are going and facing a website or any any, any place is to get uh, the information we are interested in, in rapidly okay uh, and uh, here is where personalization is mandatory. Here is where uh, the not to throw people to information or data oceans is mandatory as well, because if not, what the only thing that we are getting is to get people lost, okay? And uh, here we can talk about different systems, okay? And uh, for me, uh, as uh, another key point that it could be uh, named or called as mandatory is make it easy for people, okay? Make it really easy. Not, uh, not to make people to work for the systems, but do the system work right. for people, okay? That's, that's it. Thank you. No, interesting. Um, and and uh, you know, firsthand seeing your work, it's 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 amazing. And we'll we'll dive into a couple of those concepts as we as we go through. You mentioned, despite the fact that you clearly are a, a man of the world and working in a number of different countries, you're based out in uh, Bitskaya, the Basque country. Um, so I wanted to kick off um, really, you know, as a as a businessman, as an employer, as a, a resident. You just um, what's happening out there on the ground in the in in the Basque country in terms of employment? Is it very different to what we're hearing across the rest of Europe and, quite frankly, across the rest of the world? Or are there any interesting kind of new trends emerging that you're you're seeing? What I what I see uh, once that uh, I have been working in different um, uh, with in different experience in different projects uh, as related to to the talent. Uh, uh, management and all this 
uh, what I can say is that uh, it's almost the same everywhere. I mean, all of us are fighting uh, for, on the one hand, as professionals to have the best opportunities we can, okay, to have the best life you know, benefits and all uh, the life quality uh, that we can. And uh, on the other hand, we have as companies, as the representative of a company, we are fighting for having the best talent we can. Okay. And uh, this is in some way changing a lot after all this pandemic period, you know, because in the end, uh, prior to this, we, most of us, were focused on how to make our region attractive for people to come here physically, I mean, and uh, we needed, um, as companies as well, we, we, we needed them to stay with us here and work with us in, and have the best uh, team uh, we, we could, but uh, after all these uh, happenings and uh, related to the pandemic and all this, uh, this uh, part of the where you are is not uh, so a key point, depending on the sector. Okay, mm -hmm. this is depending on the sector and depending on which is the goal, it's time. What we, we see is that, uh, of, of course, public administrations of course, they, they are fighting for attracting and retaining the, the talent. Of course, this uh, can be shown in, in the different uh, uh, projects we have been working on here in Vizcaya or in Oporto or uh, in, in, in the Basque Country uh, as a whole as well. But uh, I see that uh, it's almost the, the same everywhere. The, the the point here for me is related to what you mentioned before is about okay all that world of uh, the educational areas is evolving so fast okay and uh, that uh, of course i have mentioned two two different Profiles. Okay, I have mentioned professionals and uh, and uh, companies, but I could mention educational centers as well. They are they are fighting for getting their the, the customers as well. And in order to get that, they have to know what is the 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 market offering, what is the market uh, demanding, and uh, they have to always be thinking of okay. What's next? Okay, how can I fill up the neatest appearing in the market? And uh, there is where we can link this with uh, skills. We can link this with uh, occupations. We can link this with uh, uh, studies and careers and all that. So going back to, to the idea of uh, the educational uh, but, uh, the degrees and all that. Uh, I, I see here that uh, we have a challenge of how to, we can translate those knowledges into skills. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because in the end, the only way to be able, for us to be able to compare what uh, we have, what for we uh, versus what we need is having something standardized, something yeah. something really Common. well cataloged. Yes, okay. where sense. we can say, okay, yes, this is a new career, good, but uh, only with the title, I I I, I couldn't extract. Which is the your your which are your skills are, are ones that you have a degree here, okay? But in the end, if we are able to translate those studies into skills, then will we able to say, okay, this is what we get, this is what we have. So once that we have that, we are able to 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 say someone a professional, for example, as you as, as we know that you have this specific profile, we 
guess that you are interested on this, okay? So then is when artificial intelligence uh, and all that start, starts working for us, okay? Systems start working for us. That's the, the interesting point is about personalization as uh, I said before. It's about, okay, do not show me whatever you have, no. Just show me what uh, is interesting for me, okay? Because in the end, sorry. Yeah, no, I, I just wanted to say, I think, you know, in drawing from some of these strands together, um, we, we, we talked earlier and Marco provided a bit of a background and a recap and, and you've sort of reinforced a lot of what we're discussing about the kind of need for good insight, more granular insight, more, you know, thinking about those low and, the lowest common denom denominator of, of how skills connect together, both in education, within experiences, but are also then how we define roles these days. Therefore, we need to make that connection using the the, co the common language. And, you know, I asked you about the, the, the Basque region, Biscaya, because um, you live, you live and your, your business is there. But also that's what we have as, as businesses come together, isn't it, in terms of work in on the ground in Boscai. So maybe this is a great opportune moment to, to actually for you to share a little bit about the different strands of work that, that are happening that are leveraging the data, our data alongside lots of other insights that you're gathering together on behalf of the communities in Biscay. And I have a few different strands um, working now in the region to help you mentioned personalization to help very specific use cases. So I wonder if you wanted to kind of maybe give us a quick summary of some of those use cases that are on the ground and, and, and working in Biscaya, and maybe kind of some of the um, the learnings that we've had. And then and then we can talk about other regions as well um, to, to kind of evolve that. So yeah, just very interested to hear hear your experience and, and how you're leveraging our data on the ground for, for different communities in, Bis in the Biscaya region. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in this case, what, uh, for example, uh, we, we have had uh, different experiences, as you said, and uh, for example, uh, we can talk about one of them is uh, the, the, the one uh, related to Biscaya talent. These guys, uh, they, they, their goal is to try to retain and attract talent to, to the Basque country, okay? And uh, they are really good on that. I have to say that because uh, it's, it's, it's not because I, I, I said it, it's uh, because community says it, okay? Yeah. They, are, they are very relevant uh, uh, agency, okay? Uh, so uh, what uh, we did for them is to, to try to help them to create that communi community because uh, their goal was to and is to create a, a big community of highly highly qualified professionals okay Re link it to the Basque country together with uh, companies based here in the Basque country as well okay this is that's uh, his goal so taking that into account what we have been doing during this uh, this uh, years is to include different services and for example one of them allows someone uh, to, uh, to representative of companies to prior uh, to uh, just waiting for uh, people to 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 apply for a job offer instead of that they have the chance of okay saying what they need including the skills including occupations and all that and the system is able to do the matching between what is in the database this is those professionals included registered in their community and what uh, is required okay so things like that and yeah. uh, as we are talking about a community so to jump in so instead of broadcasting and advertising on mass what those employers are able to do is to better define what they're seeking and then go into that community and find people within that community who have have a stronger match to, to what yeah. they're seeking so that they can really cherry pick and target people that are mo mo most relevant and therefore it's a 
removes the noise and the inefficiency of maybe the traditional kind of job ad. Let's just throw it out there and see who gets to it. It's a lot more targeted and precise. Um, and, and I suppose that presupposes and helps companies really think about what is it they're looking for in talent when they are going out to market as opposed to sort of casting the net really wide and and seeing what they get back and hope that it's a, a fit Re really interesting sorry to sorry to jump in Ca carry on um with yeah that. and uh, that's that's uh, an example of what uh, we have on there and uh, of course as we are talking about a community where we uh, can talk about uh, uh, a place where professionals and companies can meet each other Okay, mm -hmm. that's relevant as well. I mean, the same that I can, as a professional, can search for uh, for uh, companies. Companies can search for prof professionals, taking into account different concepts, including uh, skills, including occupations, including uh, educational areas. I mean, in this case, we are talking about that because we have the entire uh, profile of uh, professionals and uh, and companies and all that. But for example, if we go to a different case, like uh, in the, the observatory of Porto, where we work at, at uh, as well, uh, in, in that case, the goal is not to create a community, is to create a, an observatory where everything you see is interesting for you. It's based on your interests, okay? so. The same, uh, I mean, we are applying that in the in all the cases we have been working is personalization. Personalization, taking into account what we know about you, okay? So, and taking into account that we have to make it, on the one hand, easy to tell us what your, your knowledge and your experiences are, first of all, and then is making it easy for you to consume the information that we, uh, we we guess is interesting for you and it's adapted to your interests. Okay, so th those are uh, key points because, uh, for example, in the case of Porto, the the number of data that uh, or parameters we ask users to to give us about them is pretty uh, small. I mean, we are talking about, okay, let me know which are the your, your locates, okay, which is lo your location, and which are the sectors of your interest. And then we can go and say, okay, taking into account that, because in the end, for example, in the case of uh, Porto as an, as an observatory, we are including data about unemployment, about uh, uh, the educational centers about uh, who who, uh, who is uh, and how many people are, are enrolled in which uh, uh, educational areas, which of them are expected to uh, be graduated, all of that. Okay, so it's plenty of information, but when knowing of, of okay who is on the other on the other side. Who is? It's a professional, it's an educational center, it's a an, an public administration, it's a, a company, depending on that, and taking into account, as I said, their interest, the specific interest, is when the information will go to the users. Because in the end, we have no time. Our experiences, all of them, tell us that people don't apply time on this. I mean, we have, we are going really fast for everything. Okay. It's the same everywhere. <laughs> it's not uh, something that happens here. Well, we, we, yeah, I mean, we are very cognizant of that as a, as a data business um, in that uh, we sit on billions of data points for the world, you know, US, UK, across Europe, across Asia Pacific, you know, absolute tons of data. And it's not good enough just to go, there you go, Here's all of our data. You just get what you need from it because it's just too big and too cumbersome. Uh, so the great challenge and why I love working with organizations like yours is to, to really get into the mindset of who really needs this information? What questions are they going to ask? What questions are they asking? And therefore, 
what information do we need to serve up that helps them answer that specific question and maybe helps them guide them towards the next question they need to be to be asking so obviously the great challenge of taking this kind of data to the masses is getting ever sharper on who the user is and what what they're trying to achieve so you you mentioned uh Biscaya talent and that the, the user is very much a two side of that commun that community the the professionals community and then the the employers who are seeking talent and looking for those connections and then you mentioned the observatory in Oporto uh, in Portugal so just interested what what typical users are you seeing in in Portugal is it, is it similar to to Biscaya talent or is it aimed at a very different audience um there What's the story uh, the the expected audience is different because in the end uh, the Sky of Talent is focused in highly qualified professionals only. Okay, in the case of uh, the Port Observatory, is much wider. I mean, it's for everyone. Okay, is uh, and uh, then you can go and and see. Okay, what's happening with uh, this the, the people with this uh educational uh, level or this other one or whatever okay and uh, you can see different points of view and views of the reality uh, there are many realities you know uh, each of us uh, has its, its own uh, reality so what uh, we have there is uh, as a base a lot of uh, of information but in the end we have to take it and mm. throw it uh, specifically to the users if we go a third uh, example we have for example in this case we if we talk about uh, the basque employment uh, agency uh, for example in that case they already have the community i mean they already have almost uh, 2 million of people or over 1 million people there because everyone who uh, has a, a, had uh, an employment they, they, they always uh, pass from uh, through there so they are i mean in that way they are registered but the goal in that at that point is first of all how to maintain that information the, the information they have updated first of all and then uh because in the end the, the goal is to uh, create an interesting place for or the most interesting place for uh, all employers and employees to be there okay mm -hmm. because in the end if you have that uh, database really updated you as a professional could go and see okay what's going on in the market and which could be uh, the best uh, opportunities for me okay and the same on the other side on the side of uh, companies when saying okay let's let's check what uh, we have here who is an employer or which is the opportunity in this in this specific region for example because that uh, what, what i said uh, in terms of uh, that is the presential or physical uh, presence is not mandatory nowadays. It's not mandatory depending on the kind of job okay, you are offering, of course. Okay? In our case, for example, as an IT, you can imagine that uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not a, a key point for us, okay? but in the end, it's something that is relevant in many sectors still. So, going back to, to the questions uh, the question you made is that okay the, the what we have there is that uh, all the time the work is to analyze which is the information that, what we we can extract first of all what what do we have and then think of okay and which are the different profiles in general terms of people of users okay that could come and use our, our system okay and then is when we can define okay and which could have sense to ask for uh, to, to do for that people i mean 
when you ask for information uh, to, to uh, any user for information, is because mm, something is expected to to give back. You know, if not, it's like okay, what's that? It's like. Uh, always accepting everything and terms and conditions. No, it's not like that. It has to be much more in based on added value, the added value that you can give once you have that information. Okay. Yeah. Really interesting. Thank you, Nigo. Um, uh, I'm sure uh, we will have many more of these kinds of conversations because I think you got a lot of great experience and wisdom to, to, to share. I'm very grateful for that. And I think just to come right back to the beginning of our conversation when we talked about some of the labor market challenges and yes they're quite common quite frankly around the world you know colleagues in america talking about very similar challenges as as, as we're seeing across europe and uk and and other regions but what you've highlighted in two examples is different ways to, that different localities are trying to solve those problems with maybe different ends in mind, different goals in mind, but also different start points. As you say, there was a community already there. It was about how to add more value to the Biscaya talent community. Whereas for Porto, maybe it was more a case of actually just building, building visibility and understanding more generally was that was the driver there. And the key is similar types of information, obviously localized and relevant to localities, but harnessed in different ways, driven by um, the, the the community and what the what the community wants to to achieve from that so um fantastic examples thank you and and, and both of those are are live and open or at least you know you can you can access presumably that we could share some links to so if people are interested in in exploring um they could have a a, a, a poke around so we'll try and grab some links and share those um with our with our audience here um just just before we finish and you go we have a community, the, the MZ Burning Glass community is very much around yeah, under, yeah, about labor market data and interested in understanding labor market dynamics. You've shown a couple of great examples. Any, what, what's your number one kind of recommendation to, to our audience in terms of thinking about how they can really maximize the value of having good data about their economy? Is there, is there any, anything that you would, flag is higher than anything else that for people to be thinking about after this session yeah first of all i would uh, i would say that uh, the the first thing that uh, they should think of is which data they they have around first of all but uh, once that we have data into account is uh, okay and which of them are standardized i mean and mm -hmm. if not how can can I standardize them? Okay, that's when uh, if we go back to to the sample of the skills and occupations. Of course, that is great to talk about skills and occupations, but we should always think of okay, but which is the standard that we will use when yeah. talking about those? Okay, for example. DSCO in the case of Europe, okay, this a, a great example, okay, of that. And uh, in the end, that uh, that makes you, uh, I mean, that gives you uh, a very interesting tools in terms of that. For example, there are, there are some uh, skills which are disappearing, okay with uh, the, this evolution is doing that i mean for example uh, if uh, use a computer which was a, a, a skill okay but is not considered as a skill in the last version of the esco for example okay because in the end everyone does it okay yeah. and this is evolving all the time so standardization will help us to have it updated all the information updated but which is much more in relevant for me is that then we can compare things yeah. okay we can extract the information we need to do comparisons then to think of okay am i looking for the right people am i doing it well am i being well focused when i'm talking about a, 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 a company representative or I'm doing things well as a professional when 
this is what uh, the market is demanding. For example, in the case of the Basque, uh, the Basque employment uh, uh, agency, we were thinking of okay. We, we, we suggest that the following is how we can suggest the best option for people taking into account what they already have. And it's, it's, it's as easy as like that. <laughs> it's, first of all, we can extract which is next, I mean, is closer to you from your current situation. But then you have, that's, that's not always the best option because the best option is that which sometimes can take a, a, high, a higher effort from your side, but which can be really a much higher opportunity for you in your career. So those parameters are interesting always to take into account all of them in the end, but Again, a standardization is uh, a key point. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, no, can't can't uh, I can't argue with that. You know that, uh, and certainly something we think very carefully about in our data is we recognise whilst Marco and I and and all of my great colleagues at MVC Burning Glass are incredibly geeky about our own data and how how uh, how impactful it can be. We also recognise that it's a piece of a very complex jigsaw puzzle. And so the ability to make connections to other parts, other pieces of that jigsaw puzzle um, and standardisation um, is a, a really key part of that. Um, it, it, it then means you can really make the data work in a more cohesive and, and user driven, personalised kind of way. So fantastic. Uh, Fantastic recommendation to leave us with, Inigo. Thank you so much for joining us. It's uh, been a real pleasure. Thank you. Working with your organization. Uh, and I think what it re reinforces is the value of the, the one size does not always fit all. Um, it's really important to take these building blocks and apply them in different ways. And your organization are absolute wizards and experts at that. So I'm very encouraged by our, our work together. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Alicia. My pleasure, my pleasure. Uh, we'll see you in the future uh, webinar series, no doubt, no doubt. So see you. Thank you. So thank you, Inigo. Um, we're going to now um, just bring to con this session to a conclusion, a very interesting one, I hope you uh, will agree. And I just wanted to reinforce something I mentioned on the last time, which is quite a lot of stuff is brewing up on our end. So, uh, so we've got some really big news coming early next week. Um, as we uh, move forward, uh, you may recall that about 12 months or so ago, MZ and Burning Glass merged together to become the world's premier labor market intelligence organization. And we have very big ambitions. The next part of this is about looking not backwards to where we've come from, which of course is valuable, important, but really looking forwards uh, and looking forwards uh, to a very exciting uh, 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 future um, globally, but but particularly here in here in Europe, as we connect some of the the building blocks of the work that we've been doing and some of the stuff that Inigo has been mentioning, and 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 put it onto a new footing. So come Monday, uh, we will be launching uh, a whole new identity. Um, so keep an eye out for that. We're very excited, but we're we're not going to give the game away just yet, are we, Marco? Um, but come Monday afternoon, European time. Certainly on Tuesday, you'll see a very different identity um, for us. And that's the start of some very exciting things. We're building a whole raft of resources um, uh, for, for you, our community, to continue to better understand and play with the labor market information, look at insights for your regions and your areas, and really start to think about how you can bring this to your work and how it can elevate um, the activities, much like Inigo shared from from Bitskaya and from Porto, and, and we're working in other regions as well. So uh, we will be sharing a lot more, and particularly after the summer break, um, you'll be hearing a lot more from us um, and under a new guise and with some slightly different colors associated with us, uh, but the same core mission that we're pressing on. So we're very excited to uh, share that with you next week and onwards. So thank you, Marco, for joining me once again. Thank you, Inigo. Uh, for your very kind and generous contributions to this session. I will say goodbye uh, for now, and I'll see you on the other side. Back to you, Debbie.
Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you for joining us.